Hey there, folks. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. Welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. <sighs> Who doesn't love DreamWorks animation? Next to Disney, these guys are known to make great animated films. I mean, sure, most of them are considered comedies that involve pop culture references, but most of them are pretty good to fun, pretty good and fun to watch, like Shrek, Kung Fu Panda. How to Train Your Dragon, and more. One of my favorites, for example, is Madagascar, which is a story about four animals who break out of the Central Park and get, get captured by animal control. Later, they find themselves on a boat bound for Africa, but then their crates fall overboard, and they get washed up on Madagascar. Now, personally, this movie wasn't perfect, and but and a little rushed, but it was a lot of fun, and I love the friendship between Alex and Marty, plus the song I Like to Move It, Move It, sung by Sacha Baron Cohen, was fun too. Too bad I can't say the same for the film that he was in after this. Ugh. But... At least I'm glad he got to sing in two films that were better than that. Anyway, many years after the first film, in 2008, DreamWorks gave us a sequel where Alex, Marty, Gloria, and Melman try to use an old plane to fly home, but they crashed into an African wildlife reserve and meet Alex's parents. This film was a better story than in the first film in my eyes, and the gang did get a lot of character development. It was also sweet that Melman and Gloria became a couple, but on the other hand, it was sad that we lost Bernie Mac in the process. And in the summer of 2012, a third movie was made called Europe's Most Wanted. In that film, after an incident at the Monte Carlo Casino, the gang are being chased throughout Europe by a crazy French animal control officer who wants Alex's head, while they join a circus that is planning to have an American tour if they're successful in London. Now, to be honest, I consider this one my favorite out of the three, with all the certain crazy jokes, slapstick, and circus tricks that are included, especially Katy Perry's fireworks song. Now... In each of those films, my favorite characters are, without a doubt, the Penguin Gang. Skipper, Rico, Kowalski, and Private play out like spies for the films, and I believe that their wackiness and zaniness got them a Christmas short titled A Christmas Caper in 2005. And their own TV show, which aired on Nickelodeon in 2008. Now, in my opinion, the TV show isn't that good to me. It's not even as good as the Madagascar films themselves, because they're not canon with the films, and its animation seems a little bit of a downgrade to its original. But I love the Christmas short better. The next thing you know, I managed to see this movie last year at my local cinema. Now, I was planning to blog it last year after my, uh, well, after my Curse of Princess Ivy blog last November, but what happened was, well, I hate to say this, but my channel got struck for no godforsaken reason. And I just hope that nobody strikes me on my show ever again. But now that it, this movie's on DVD, let's get started. Besides, like I said on my last Unicorn blog, I did promise you viewers I would do it this year. Released on November 26, 2014, the movie is Penguins of Madagascar. So, let's begin, shall we? Pluggy Penguins, Skipper, Kowalski, Rigo, and Private 
the most elite spies that were hatched joined forces with an undercover organization known as the North Wind. Led by a highly trained, handsome, and arrogant agent classified, this special interspecies task force must stop a many tentacled villain, Dr. Octavius Bryan, a.k.a. Dave, from destroying the world. So, what do I even think about this movie? Well, to be honest, it was wacky, fun, zany, and in my eyes, it's better than the TV show, but it's not better than the Madagascar trilo trilogy. So, let's move on to my Mustang notes and you'll see what I mean. Now, a directed video film featuring the Penguins had been, work been in the works since 2005, when the first Madagascar film was released with a release date planned for 2009. In March 2011, it was announced that the Penguin characters would be given their own feature film, similar to the 2011 Puss in Boots film, to be directed by Simon Smith, the co-director of B-Movie, produced by Lara Bray and written by Alan J. Schoolcraft and Brent Simmons, the writers of DreamWorks Megamind. In July 2012, at Comic-Con, it was announced that the film titled The Penguins of Madagascar would be released in 2015. Robert Shuley, one of the producers of the Penguins series, said that the film would be unrelated to the TV series of the same name. Thank God. But added that they could always change. In, tw in September 2012, 20th Century Fox and DreamWorks Animation announced a release date of March 27, 2015, and a new pair of writers, Michael Colton and John Ab Abode. On May 20, 2014, the film's release date was moved up to November 26, 2014, from its initial t March 27, 2015 bout, switching places with DreamWorks Animation's other film, Home, which I already blogged a few weeks ago. Jeffrey Katzenberg, DreamWorks Animation CEO, reasoned that the film coming from one of DreamWorks Animation's most successful franchises would have an easier task to stand out at, around the Thanksgiving holiday, while Home would try to take advantage of a less competitive spring release window and repeat successful spring launches of some of DreamWorks Animation's original films, including the awful Croods film, and the awesome How to Train Your Dragon film. Now, since this is a DreamWorks film, the animation is pretty good. Ever since the first Madagascar, it has improved, and while it's still great with all the country skippers gang goes to, like Venice, the Sahara Desert, and Shanghai, along with New York City, there are a few things I need to point out. Most of them I'll talk about later, which of all the characters, but mostly, the movies seem to take place after Europe's Most Wanted, which makes it feel like a semi-sequel to Madagascar, but it still plays out like a spin-off film. Next, remember in the first Madagascar film when the Penguins said they wanted to go to the wide-open spaces of Antarctica? Well, uh, why did they want to go back there in that film when in the beginning of... When at the beginning of this film, they, well, they were tired of how the other penguins acted, and they wanted to get away from there. Also, remember that scene in the middle of the first film when they said that Antarctica sucks because of there weren't any penguins running around? Well, whatever happened to the other penguins from Antarctica in this film? Like, did they get captured by sailors and got taken to other zoos? Ugh, whatever. Let's just move on to the characters and their voice actors. Let's start by talking about the Penguins themselves. <clears throat> Skipper, voiced by Tom McGrath, who also serves as the movie's writer, is the leader of the Penguins. Kowalski, voiced by Chris Miller, is the brains of the Penguins. Rico, voiced by Conrad Vernon, is the loose cannon of the Penguins. And Private, voiced by Christopher Knights, the rookie of the Penguins. Now, these guys haven't changed since Madagascar. 
And don't bother asking me about their roles from the show because I don't want to bother. Two of them are my favorites in the gang. I mean, while I do like Skipper's cool and smooth leadership and Kowalski's wisdom, my real favorites are Rico because of his uh, ability to knock out anyone he slaps, and his belly can hold anything no matter how big and no matter how much. Second, being private, because I like how in, in this, this movie gives him a chance to shine when mostly Skipper doesn't take him seriously too much. I mean, mostly Skipper wants private to do is look cute and cuddly. Anyway, let's talk about the new characters in this film. Starting with the villain, Dave. A villainous and disgruntled octopus, voiced by John Malkovich, who was King Galbatorix in Aragon. In this film, he has a human disguise known as Dr. Octavius Brine. Now that kind of idea sounds almost like a dog in a robotic version of a person, Kind of like in the live-action Scooby-Doo film from 2002. Dave's plan in this film is to use a serum to turn all the penguins of the world into monst monstrous mutants to wreak havoc on the world. Now, now, why is Dave doing this? Well, he used to live in the Central Park Zoo until Skipper's gang overshadowed him, and he got transferred to other zoos around the world, but wherever he got transferred to, he always got thrown out and replaced by penguins. So in a way, he's trying to get revenge on the people for throwing him out, and penguins for overshadowing him. I also need to note that he's pretty funny for a villain. I mean, he doesn't know how to work his communicator controls, and he has tiny octopus henchmen who are all puns of famous people, like Nicolas Cage or Kevin Bacon. But I wonder how he managed to talk to people, since in the other Madagascar films, the humans don't understand what, what animals are saying. Hmm. Let's just move on. Next we come to the North Wind agents, Starting with their leader, Agent Classified, a gray wolf voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch, who you may know who voiced and motion captured as Smaug from Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy. This guy is my second favorite character in the film, first being Dave. Classified made a great character. I mean, he's smart and he knows how to make plans with his teammates when it involves a dangerous mission. Speaking of which, let's move on to his teammates. There's Short Fuse, a... Well, a Belgian explosive demolition expert, Harp Seal, voiced by Ken Jeong. Ava a Russian snowy owl, and the intelligence analysis voiced by Annette um, Mahendru, and Corporal, a Norwegian polar bear, and the muscle voiced by Peter Stormare. And now it's t time to move on to my final words of this film. Overall, Penguin the Madagascar is a funny and zany spy film to come from DreamWorks. Skipper's gang is unforgettable, and I like how Private was able to prove himself that he can be a hero in this film. The North Wind agents are cool, and the villain Dave is pretty hilarious. If you're a fan of the Madagascar movies, then I recommend you watch this film. I give this film a rating of 70% out of 100. Well, that's it for today. Stay tuned for my next blog. Mustang Power.
<sighs> Finally, that zone's over with. Now, what should I blog next to amuse my audience? Mm. Huh? What in the heck was that?